the surface of Pluto to be much like the other icy moons and planets. A surface of ice with a smattering of craters. How wrong we were. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope may soon shed light on Pluto and other icy planets. James Webb has returned stunning images of faraway exoplanets, complex nebula nurseries and galaxies whose light has taken over 13 billion years to reach our sight since its debut in December 2021. Soon it will turn its full attention to the Kuiper Belt, a vast disk just beyond Neptune's orbit home to comets, asteroids and other icy things. Beyond Neptune, the planets and objects, including Pluto, are mainly unknown surfaces. However, the James Webb Space Telescope recently discovered something on Pluto which baffled astronomers. What discoveries have scientists made on Pluto? What effect does it have on us here on Earth? And can these new findings restore Pluto's status as a planet? Let's take a look at NASA's James Webb Space Telescope and learn why its newest discoveries have left scientists baffled. Pluto was classified as a dwarf planet in 2006. However, it is also a trans-Neptunian object, TNO, and a Kuiper Belt object, KBO. Planetary scientists classify it as a TNO because Pluto's orbit sometimes crosses that of Neptune and as a KBO. After all, it is one of the most significant known objects in the Kuiper Belt. Despite losing its planet ranking, Pluto remains intriguing for various reasons. The planetoid continues to pique scientific curiosity at an all-time high. Many observers, however, wonder whether, since the JOST is intended to capture distant objects, it can be used to investigate Pluto. Well, one of the JWST's most recent photographs answers the question. The powerful telescope captured a beautiful picture of Neptune, the last planet in the solar system. The photograph sparked a lot of interest since it was the clearest glimpse of Neptune in decades. It was caught with a near-infrared camera, commonly known as a near-chem, which also captured the planet's brilliant rings and fainting dust bags. The dust bags are seen as fuzzy particles between the brighter, ice-dominated rings. One expert said it had been three decades since we saw these weak dust rings. This is also the first time the rings have been viewed in infrared to comprehend the image. You should be aware that due to the wavelength of the JWS, Neptune appears black except when high-altitude clouds are visible. The methane ice clouds appear in the photograph as brilliant streaks and dots. Before methane gas absorbs sunlight, clouds deflect it. In addition to a narrow luminous ring surrounding the equator, the infrared picture includes seven of Neptune's 14 confirmed moons. Triton is the most visible moon because it is the biggest and brightest. It reflects a lot of sunlight, making it simpler to photograph. So there is little question that the JWST will provide us with spectacular photographs of Pluto to help us learn more about the planetoid. One of the JWST's immediate objectives on Pluto is to follow anything unexpected that is occurring there. The atmosphere of the dwarf planet is evaporating, according to experts, who say that Pluto is undergoing a bizarre transition altering its atmosphere. They use telescopes in the United States and Mexico to investigate the dwarf planet in its thin hemisphere, which is mainly formed of nitrogen and similar to Earth's. The vapor pressure of ice on Pluto's surface keeps its atmosphere stable. As a result, when Pluto's ice melts, the density of its atmosphere changes dramatically. But the issue is that astronomers have been watching Pluto as it moves farther and farther away from the Sun for almost 25 years. The surface temperature has been lowering over this period, causing Pluto's atmosphere to refreeze onto its surface as the dwarf planet grows colder and colder. And this temperature reduction isn't going away anytime soon since Pluto is so distant from the Sun that it will only become farther away and harder as time passes. Pluto is the largest identified dwarf planet in the solar system and was formerly thought to be the ninth and furthest planet from the Sun. The unusual world is situated in the Kuiper Belt, a region beyond Neptune's orbit home to hundreds of thousands of rocky and ice planets bigger than 62 miles 100 kilometers in diameter and one trillion or more comets. 
Pluto lost its status as a planet when it was reclassified as a dwarf planet in 2006, a move that sparked controversy and disagreement in the scientific community and also among the general public. Pluto, the dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt, is a donut-shaped area of frozen worlds beyond Neptune's orbit. Millions of these ice objects, known as Kuiper Belt objects KBOs, or trans-Neptunian objects TNOs, might be in our solar system's furthest reaches. Pluto, smaller than the Moon, is home to a heart-shaped glacier the size of Oklahoma and Texas. This fascinating planet boasts an azure sky, whirling moons, mountains as tall as the Rockies and snow, but it's red snow. Scientists have long assumed Pluto was the only object in the Kuiper Belt. However, when astronomers learned more about the Kuiper Belt and the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, we realized that there are many objects like Pluto. In some aspects, it is more like Pluto than the other planets. With the discovery of so many new things, it became imperative for astronomers to understand what we mean by the term planet and to determine which category Pluto belonged to. The International Astronomical Union established three rules to define a planet. The object must orbit the Sun, it must be sufficiently large enough to be roughly spherical, and it must have cleared its orbit of any objects of comparable mass to its own, that is, it must be gravitationally dominant in its orbit. Pluto meets the first two of these requirements, but not the third. Even one of its moons, Charon, is almost half the size of Pluto. Pluto is now the king of the dwarf planet group rather than the runt of the planet group, but what is Pluto made of? Pluto is believed to have a rocky core, according to astronomers. Outside of it, but still deep in the interior, there's probably an ocean of water surrounded by another layer of frozen water ice. The surface crust comprises a layer of different ices, predominantly nitrogen ice, with massive mountains of water ice and traces of methane and carbon monoxide ice. Is there an atmosphere on Pluto? Yes, Pluto's atmosphere, like its crust, comprises nitrogen, methane and carbon monoxide, Pluto's atmosphere also contains haze particles which scatter blue light. These particles begin as ionized methane and nitrogen in Pluto's atmosphere. As the ions interact with one another, they form increasingly complex molecules and begin to form an outer shell of volatile ice. As the haze particles grow in size, they begin to tumble through the sky, accumulating additional ice. This snow is a reddish-gray on Pluto's surface. However, scientists believe Pluto's climate might change, allowing life to flourish on the dwarf planet. But this would be disastrous for Earth. Indeed, Pluto is now outside the region around the Sun that is habitable. But the Sun will grow larger and become a red giant, increasing its energy output for millions of years. The Sun will enter a subgiant phase and steadily double in size over maybe half a billion years after the core hydrogen is used up. The Sun will eventually devour all of the inner planets, including Earth. However, the habitable zone will have expanded to the outer solar system by then. The Sun would heat the Earth to a temperature higher than Venus. The Sun will then grow over the next half a billion years, becoming almost 200 times bigger and many thousand times brighter than it is right now. Then begins the RGB phase, also known as the Red Giant Branch, which will persist for almost a billion years. The Sun will shed nearly a third of its mass during this time. Pluto and other Kuiper Belt objects will all experience severe warming. However, it's unlikely that life would arise from nothing on Pluto, given the makeup of these planets and the tiny window in which they will be warmer and wetter. If humanity is still alive, we must take it from Earth, seed Pluto, and other worlds that have survived with flora and terrestrial life. It would help if you didn't worry since these catastrophic cosmic catastrophes won't begin for around 5.4 billion years. However, the JWST can aid researchers in their search for evidence of life on Pluto. Usually, completing this challenging operation would have required sending a probe to Pluto, which may have returned samples for study on Earth. About 5,000 exoplanets have been discovered by scientists, of which hundreds are thought to be capable of supporting life. However, the JWST may be aimed at a dwarf planet like Pluto to examine it to find life in a world. Astrobiologists investigate light that interacts with the planet's atmosphere or surface. If life had ever been on the world, it would have changed the surface or atmosphere. Take the Earth, for instance, which had primitive single-celled life, but an oxygen-free atmosphere for the first half of its history. Light traveling through the atmosphere may convey a hint or a biosignature. Therefore, the Earth's biosignature was relatively weak throughout this early period. 
However, fast forward to 2.4 billion years ago, when a new algae family arose using photosynthesis, whose byproducts liberated oxygen. No other element is chemically linked to this oxygen. At this point, Earth's oxygen-rich atmosphere started to produce a strong and noticeable biosignature in light. One fundamental idea that scientists base their work on is that specific wavelengths of light are more likely to be trapped on the surface of a gas or substance when they reflect off of it. The selective trapping of distinct light wavelengths causes the varied colors of things. The pattern of missing light depends on how the light interacts with the substance in question. Astronomers may use this technique to determine the makeup of a planet's atmosphere or surface by analyzing the particular color of light the planet emits. Because they leave behind highly distinct traces in light, several atmospheric gases connected to life may be detected by astronomers. It might also see unusual hues on an Earth-like planet's surface. For instance, the chlorophyll and other pigments that plants and algae employ for photosynthesis collect specific wavelengths of light and generate distinctive colors that are assigned to be seen coming from the surface of a faraway planet by sophisticated infrared cameras. Not just any telescope can do this kind of analysis on the light coming from a distant planet, which might indicate the presence of chlorophyll on the planet. Only the JWST can do so, so there has been a lot of enthusiasm about it. The JWST is fantastic because it has already been proven. For example, the James Webb Space Telescope can add the following to its extensive record of astronomical achievements. First of its kind evidence of an extrasolar planet's presence was uncovered with a satellite observatory's assistance. The celestial body that is known as LHS 475b and is situated outside of our solar system has a size that is very close to that of Earth. The rocky planet is located in the Octans constellation and is 41 light years distant from Earth. Water vapor was detected by astronomers using the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, which was pointed towards a distant rocky planet. The detection of water vapor around an extrasolar planet, also known as an exoplanet, may indicate the existence of an atmosphere surrounding the exoplanet, which would be significant in our quest to find planets beyond the solar system that are capable of supporting life. However, the researchers responsible for the finding warn that the water vapor may just as well be coming from the planet's host star as it could from the Earth itself. Gigantic ice volcanoes were active very recently on the minor planet Pluto, based on the strange lumpy topography spotted on Pluto. This terrain is unlike anything that has ever been seen anywhere in the solar system. According to recent research, the finding, which was discovered by analyzing photographs collected by NASA's Current Horizons probe, implies that the interior of Pluto was significantly hotter much later than was previously supposed. This contradicts earlier theories. Kelsey Singer, the research author and a planetary scientist at Colorado's Southwest Research Institute, claimed that ice volcanoes exude a thicker, slushy, icy water mix or even possibly a solid flow like glaciers, rather than spewing lava into the air. Pluto has a unique region that geologists believe was produced by the explosion of ice volcanoes. The New Horizons mission, launched by NASA in 2006, captured precise images of the surface of Pluto, a dwarf planet, and the most prominent object in the Kuiper belt. A new study looks at photographs of a region with two significant mounds that experts believe are ice volcanoes. The researchers acknowledge in their study that the area surrounding these mounds was likely produced by the relatively recent activity of ice volcanoes or cryovolcanoes. The discovery raises the likelihood that these volcanoes are active and that liquid water or something similar has recently flowed under Pluto's surface. The recent activity also suggests more heat in Pluto's innards than scientists imagined. Given previous recent findings, the scientists believe their results boost the probability of life residing under Pluto's surface. The alleged ice volcanoes also feature intense depressions at their tops. The one on Wright Mons is roughly as deep as the Tall Mount. Many portions of the region have a unique, lumpy or hummocky look, consisting of undulating spherical mounds. The researchers believe that smaller banks generated by ice volcanoes accumulated over time to build these two big mounds. Cryovolcanoes are similar to volcanoes on Earth in some aspects, since most of Pluto's surface is formed of ice, and temperatures on Pluto are considerably below the freezing point of water, that is liquid water or anything similar that is at least somewhat fluid or mobile, would behave similarly to magma on Earth, rising to the surface after an eruption and hardening or freezing into a solid. 
Some volcanoes on Earth and other planets have a depression in the center called a caldera, which forms when a recently erupted volcano collapses into the vacuum left by all the material it blasted forth. However, the depression on Wright Mons is so deep that the volcano must have to lose about half of its volume to be identical in form to Mauna Loa, a shield volcano of Hawaii that is one of the largest volcanoes on Earth, as well as having a comparatively small caldera, though the two structures are similar in volume according to Kelsey Singer, a planetary scientist at the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado. Many scientists still need to understand these characteristics, how they arose, and how cryovolcanism works on Pluto. The possibility of liquid water existing beneath Pluto's icy surface raises the chances of life existing on Pluto from practically non-existent to slightly more plausible, given other research indicating that Pluto was hot when it formed and could still have a liquid ocean beneath its icy surface. Thanks for watching, and while you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content. I'll see you there.